Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andrew Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Bender and Ash Paulson to discuss news and a recent rumor about Majora's Mask 3D. So let's get started. Alright guys, so some recent news uh, about new gameplay features or modifications to Majora's Mask 3D came out, as well as a rumor about its potential release date. So I figured we'd talk about all of this. Uh, and let's start off with that, with that release date, because it's something a lot of people are wondering about. When is this game going to come out? And according to Amazon Italy, it'll come out on February 13th. Now, granted, that is for Italy, um, but, you know, that seems like a pretty solid date for North America as well, or rather, it could be a good day for North America, um, seeing as it is a Friday, and we really do need to get that game sooner than later, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also wondering, too, if that could maybe be a hint as to when uh, the new 3DS could come out, um, seeing as the game does have, or seeing as Majora's Mask 3D does have new 3DS exclusive features, um, it would make sense for them to both come out at the same time. So, uh, what's your guys' take on all this? No, that's amazingly soon because I thought, I don't know, because they didn't have a release date, I didn't think it'd be that soon. I thought that Codename Steam would come out first, and that's in March. So I was thinking maybe like April or something like that, you know, after Codename Steam because that's the game we actually have a release date for. But if it's February, that's a lot sooner than I thought, and it, it's, I mean, great for all of us that are just dying to play it, because as you said, we got these new features coming out, which are changes that I was hoping to see the game have in order to make it a little easier for somebody who had trouble with that sort of thing the first time around. As for the new 3DS, I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, you would think it's the best idea to have the new 3DS come out at the same time as Majora's Mask, just because right. everybody's excited for the game, as well as, as it having unknown features that work with the new 3DS. It has to either come out the day of, or maybe a little bit before, but it seems odd to launch that system without any type of game to really back it up. Well, they did in uh, Australia and Japan. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but I don't know. For the U.S., they always, it seems like they always have to have that one game to go with it. Mm. You know, at least something. So, I don't know. I, I think it's definitely possible, but I, you know, if it is February 13th, that's only great news to me. It's only a month away. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, right there with you, Derek. It's a little sooner than I was expecting just because, I don't know, it, it, it seems like the early, the early part of the year isn't really, you know, it's not really a common time period for huge game releases, but... You know, you don't get much bigger than a new system release and a new Zelda remake. Even if it's just a remake, it's still a new Zelda release, and it's Majora's Mask. So, yeah, maybe a little sooner than I was expecting, but I'm really, I'm happy about it. And, uh, I, you know, I agree. that It doesn't seem likely that they will not release the new 3DS on or around that same day, just because, you know, Zelda, Zelda does have exclusive features. And uh, about, you know, uh, what you said, Andre, about Japan and Australia getting the new 3DS earlier, I don't think it's as weird to get the system first as, as it is to get a game with features exclusive to that new system first. So I don't think that's as strange as it, w as it would be if we got Zelda on February 13th and then the new 3DS came out after. I think they're probably both going to be on or around February 13th, just given what we know, you know, based on what we've been talking about. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. I don't think Majora's Mask 3D will come out before the new 3DS will. Um, although, I mean, you could say we already have an example of that. Uh, in the form of Smash Brothers, which does take advantage of the new 3DS as well, you know, with the C stick and whatnot. True. But it's, yeah, that seems to be a little bit of a different scenario. Um, but well, actually, well, who knows? We, we really don't know what the functionality of what Majora's Mask 3D is going to be on the new 3DS. It could just be maybe they are using the C stick again for camera control or whatnot. But I do think February 13th is a safe bet, especially with the fact that there have been recent rumors about a Nintendo Media event coming up, and who knows what they're showing off there. So, <laughs> but if it does happen to be a new 3DS and Majora's Mask 3D, uh, that would make sense for them to come out, you know, not terribly long thereafter. So, yeah, a, a media event like that would make a lot of sense around this time because, you know, we know kind of what Nintendo's coming out with this year, but we don't know the specifics yet. And a, a media event like that would really show off, like, 
okay, here's Codename Steam, here's Majora's Mask, here's Splatoon, and here's when they're coming out, that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's time to start hyping these games up. You know what they really should do is they should release Codename Steam as a bundle pack with Majora's Mask. I feel like that's the only way people might buy it. I, I hate to say it, but I agree. I mean, I know, I know, Derek, I know you really are excited about the game, but I don't feel like it's that, it's, I don't feel like it's that hyped up in the public sphere, really. Yeah, it's not, no. I mean, that's not commentary at all on the quality of the game. It's just, I don't think anyone cares about it. And by anyone, again, I mean, enough people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. M- the majority. Now, I understand. I, I Like, I was there. I saw the general, reac- general reaction when the game was announced. It was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that, that, that doesn't surprise me at all that, you know, it's, Codename Steam is just not that hyped. It just hits that niche spot for me so perfectly that I can't help but be hyped for it. But yeah, I, obviously Majora's Mask is the bigger game. I, I think the new 3DS launching with this, do you think Majora's Mask is the killer app that that system would need if, if I mean, this is going off, of course, the fact that we have no idea what the functionality actually is. But is that the game that you feel like would tie in and convince people like, okay, it's time to get a 3DS, specifically the new 3DS? Hmm, that's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure if I feel like that alone will convince people to get a new 3DS. I feel like there does have to be something else. I, th- I think it'll convince people to get one if they don't already have a 3DS, but there aren't that many people around anymore. So I, I do kind of wonder what Nintendo's kind of angle, marketing angle is going to be for the new 3DS, because it's not like Xenoblade Chronicles is coming out for at least a while. And even that, I don't know if that's a huge selling point either, just because it's a rather niche JRPG. So it, it does make me wonder. Yeah, that, that's a really good question, Derek. What is their marketing angle for the new 3DS? Why do people need one over and above the 3DS they already have, other than people like us who are enthusiasts? Well, you just brought up an interesting point, and in that the, the two main games we know about that are going to take advantage of the new 3DS so far are both remakes. Um, you know, one of the 64 game, the other being Xenoblade Chronicles, you know, which is a Wii game. So, yeah, I mean, are we going to get, like, a any actual, like, killer apps just, just for the new 3DS? Um, or is it going to be games that have, uh, you know, that are either ports or just have enhanced functionality? Um, so I'm thinking back, like, to the DSi, which is probably the closest thing we have to the new 3DS. And that's just didn't really have any, like, major killer apps either. Like, I had some, you know, DSi Wear games. You know, they were cool, but there was very few things I can think of that people went out to buy... Um, a new DSi exclusively for. The same thing happened with me. I saw the DSi came out, but I had no interest in getting it with for any real reason. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I, I had a DS Lite, worked fine, I mean, as far as it playing games. It had a broken hinge, but it still wasn't enough for me to actually go out and get a DSi. However, I was looking around real quick, just because I, I, I thought that date sounded familiar. There's actually might be more evidence for this, the for February 13th being the date that... Uh, Majora's Mask comes out. Oh. And that's because Kirby and the Rainbow Curse also comes out February 13th in the United States. Oh, that's a good point. And mm-hmm. we've seen Nintendo have that sort of idea behind them like, okay, here's a Wii U game and here's a 3DS yep. game both on the same date. And once again, we got a Wii U game and a 3DS game, same date. They've done it multiple times before, so you're definitely right. That is, uh, yeah, that very well could be. Would not be surprised at this point. So, although nope. it would be a little bit weird if the new 3DS does come out on the same day. That is like, you know, three, you know, three completely different or you know, three different SKUs, and one of them is an entire system. So, <laughs> yeah. Although I think I think maybe the the target audience for all of them is somewhat different. I mean, I don't think Kirby's really going to encroach upon Majora's Mask at all. I mean, I don't think people are going to go like, oh, I'm buying Kirby, so I'm not going to buy Majora's Mask. I mean, Nintendo enthusiasts are going to buy both, and most people are just going to buy Zelda. And I think Kirby, I mean, Kirby is pretty much an A-lister for Nintendo now, but that specific game isn't like it's, it's not triple deluxe, you know, it's not a new mainstream Kirby title. It's kind of right. experimental, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of different. So I think it makes sense for, or it's, it, I, I wouldn't almost say it makes sense, but it, it's not going to hurt either game to have them be released on the same day. Yeah, but probably not. I mean, if I mean, again, if Nintendo's done this before, um, and I guess we don't know for sure if this is going to be the case or not, but, uh, you know, they've done it multiple times before. If it did affect the sales of one or the other, you would think Nintendo would stop doing that. <laughs> exactly. So. All right, well, uh, beyond the release date, some more recent news came out about additions or, again, changes to the game. You know, nothing super interesting, but interesting enough for us to talk about. <laughs> and uh, one of the changes, actually, is something we predicted in our last Majora's Mask discussion, and that is they actually are updating the um, Bomber's Notebook, 
which is how you kept track of you know time-based events in the game. So this comes to us from uh, a magazine called Games Master, which uh, was relayed via Go Nintendo. And uh, apparently Shigeru Miyamoto was pushing forth that he wanted the Bomber's Notebook to be updated. And so what it's going to do now is it'll take advantage of both screens. Um, it'll make you more aware of hidden events. And, uh, and they want it to lead you to, um, to help you lead the player to hidden events in the game. So this, like, this is all, again, pretty vague. Uh, and I'm curious to know what they mean by using both screens. Like, does, does he mean it's, it's actually going to span both screens? Or do they mean that you'll be playing the game on one screen and have the Bomber's Notebook on the other um, as you're playing? Which I think makes the most sense. I think they're a really good change. I, I know I've already seen a lot of people like, no, you're taking away the difficulty of the game and how it was originally. You're dumbing it down for everybody. And I, I and depending on how they implement it, I don't agree with that fact because what I've read about the Bomber's Notebook is that it was so obtuse that it was incredibly easy to miss a good portion of that game and all of its side quests. Like you could just spend so much time searching for it and, and not find it. I don't know this from firsthand experience, of course, but I, I have heard about this. And to make it a little easier makes a lot of sense. Because um, I don't want, you know, I, when I play that game, I don't want to have a guide next to me the entire time so I know exactly where to go and to find everything. Because I, I, I'm a bit of a completionist. I like to see everything in the game and I like to go after all the heart pieces. And I know a lot of those are tied into the side quests. So the making the Bomber's Notebook better is a in my is is really great in my book, uh, huh, and you're, you uh, you, did, you, did, you beat me to it. <laughs> ha, finally, <laughs> um, but no. As far as how it's going to be used with the two screens, the only uh, I think that makes the most sense is to have it open, uh, and you can actually look at it. Maybe even have it like go directly to the map from the bomber's notebook to show where it's marked. I think it's a it's a good change. I mean, I know there are always going to be the peers out there who are going to be upset if anything beyond the graphics are changed, and even then, people get pissed off if you improve the graphics, but honestly, I think it's a good change, because I do know from first-hand experience that the Bomber's Notebook was, in fact, incredibly obtuse in the original game, and Clocktown itself is not the easiest place to navigate. It, it, it's kind of confusing, it's it's multi-layered, um, and, and kind of how I'm hoping this will work is that the whole two-screen layout is that you've got a description of what you need to do or, or the quest that you're currently pursuing, who you need to talk to, and then maybe an indicator, you know, like a, like a, on a map showing which way you need to go in Clocktown to find them and where they are. Because, you know, okay, purists aside, I, I got stuff to do, you know? I, I only have limited time to play games. I would rather... I, I'm not saying don't spell out the quest and tell me what to do and how to complete it, but at least point me in the right direction to go find the person I need to talk to to start it. Because that's just unnecessary time wasted looking for that person, and I wasted a lot of time doing that in the original Majora's Mask. So I think, honestly, I think this is unilaterally a change for the better. Yeah, I guess, I mean, for me, it depends on what exactly they mean by this. I mean, the core idea is, is really good. It did need improving. Um, you know, we mentioned that before. Uh, the thing that concerns me is them talking about making you more aware of hidden events. I just wonder, like, what exactly do they mean by that? Because so much of Majora's Mask, or Zelda games in general, of course, for me at least, is that sense of exploration and, and discovery. So I'm almost a little bit afraid that they point you too much in the right direction. Like, you'll take away that sense of discovery and, you know, uh, you know, in the whole idea of exploring this world and figuring out people's schedules. But if they just, you know, use it to surface information that's already there in the Bomber's Notebook originally, but it's just hard to decipher, I mean, I think that's great. So, I mean, I think, I think this is ultimately a good idea. I just hope they don't go too far with it and remove um, so much of what made that game special, which to me, you know, was, you know, discovering a lot of the things for yourself. All right, well, next up, um, we have something that's a little bit less concrete, which is saying something, because that wasn't really that concrete either. <laughs> and this is a uh, listing from, again, from Amazon, I believe, from Amazon Germany, that talked about a new addition to the save feature of the game, which is that, uh, I should mention that this was translated by someone over on NeoGAF, and the translation is that, uh, with the help of owl statues and the new feather statues, which can be found all over Termina, you can now save your adventure anytime you like. So that is pretty vague. Like, all we know for sure is that there are now new feather statues in addition to the owl statues, and they can save your game at any point. And a lot of people have been looking into this, um, perhaps too deeply as to what it can mean. But I've seen a lot of people suggest that this now means that this is basically like a permanent save, right? You go there, you save your game, and effectively it's a checkpoint. You can restart from there if you want. But if you just take the statement at face value, it doesn't really suggest anything of the sort. To me, I think it could just be 
basically, you know, an owl statue and how they worked in Majora's Mask, um, at least in the American version, or North American version, I should say, it functioned like a save state, where you could save your game there, but once you resumed from it, your progress was, your, you know, your save state was deleted, and if you restarted your game, you'd restart from the three-day cycle. So basically, it just allowed you to save and resume at any point, but you couldn't use it like a checkpoint, which I thought was great. Um, embraced, you know, that is exactly how that game should be. And I'm thinking this could be the exact same way, only minus the other owl statue functionality, which is you could teleport to any owl statue in the game. So I'm hoping that, yeah, this is just what it is. It just functions as like a, uh, a slightly lesser version of the owl statue that only allows you to save your game as a save state, but still as not a checkpoint, if that makes sense. I feel like it's, I spent a lot of time explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense, because everything you just described there sounds perfect. If it's done exactly like you just said, right. I will be co completely happy with how that game plays. Uh, and I will be all for it, and I'll be I'll be set to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's obviously really important that if you're going to remake this game for a handheld, you need to be able to, to stop any time and you know save your progress. And you know if just in terms of commuting or standing in line somewhere, like it's just you got to be able to pick up and play for a few minutes and stop. And I think these feather statues are going to be perfect for that. Yeah, I mean if that if they function as as I just laid out, that is a great idea. Although it makes me wonder why they just want to take it a step further and just like I like to save your game at any point. You know, I mean, why not just... It's a save state, right? It doesn't matter where you save it. Right. Um, because you've just resumed from where you left off, and then that save is gone. So, I, I don't know why they just didn't go the extra mile, but whatever. I mean, that really is such a tiny nitpick. Um, if there are feather statues all over the place, that is effectively the same thing. Yeah. Um, although, you know, the owl statues weren't that big of a pain to get to anyway. Yeah, I, this will be more convenient. They weren't that bad originally. So, but this, this does seem like a pretty, pretty good idea. They respect, you know, how the original game worked. But yeah, my only concern would be is they function like save points, at, you know, in most games where you can just resume for that point. I think that would, that would be to the game's detriment because that would remove a lot of uh, what made the game special. If you can just restart at any point from a save, you know, from where you saved. Uh, you know, that basically removes any sense of urgency you have or any sense of mistakes you could make, you know? Are you talking about if, if the three-day cycle is reset whenever you use one of these statues? No, I'm saying if you if it functioned as like a save file, right? Oh, I see. So you can create multiple save files, and so you can kind of experiment, but there you lose that sense of, sense of urgency. Well, yeah, I'm saying basically if the, if the feather statues you know function as a normal save point in in almost any other game, you could just you know if you screw up, you could just reset back to that save. Right, state. I see what you mean. Okay, right. I think that would, I mean, in most games, that's not a huge deal. In this game, it would very much work against the entire concept of the game being given a limited amount of time. And any mistakes you make, you know, those those are concrete mistakes. Like, those are meant to work against you. Like I said, I'm going off very limited experience right. here, but that does sound like the ideal way to have it. I don't want the essence of this game ruined. And it seems like they are trying to keep true to the essence of Majora's Mask. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think they're going to do that permanent save thing. I think it, you're probably on the right track here with this sort of a save state, right. um, quick save type feature. As far as how, like, the fact that they you don't, can't save anywhere... I, I don't know why they don't do it like that, but it, it kind of makes sense in some ways just because, from my understanding, Termina isn't really that huge a place anyway. Mm -hmm. So just probably sticking a few feather statues or whatever they're called uh, around the place as well as the owl statues, I think that pretty much covers it. You can just run off to where you need to go, and that actually uh, kind of buys into it. Like, okay, I need to go to this place, but I need also want to do a quick save, but I have to run out of my way to get to that quick save, so it sort of plays with that uh, aspect as well even to just a minor degree yeah i can imagine there being like um feather statues now inside temples even um, right because owl statues originally were as far as i remember only outside uh you know in the main world and you know some of those temples could be pretty involved so it mm -hmm. would make a lot of sense to incorporate some kind of same mechanic within them it does seem unnecessarily complex though i mean ocarina of time 3d lets you just save anywhere and and then call it a day why can't you do that majora's mask i wonder if it's because of the, of the three-day cycle that that creates technical complications in terms of creating a safe state, but I don't see why that would be at all an issue. I mean, it, sh it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, I mean, because you can already go into a safe state effectively by pressing the home button or putting your system to sleep mode. Right. So the difference with, with Ocarina of Time 3D is, I mean, that, that worked just like it did in Ocarina of Time originally, right? You could save at any time, but when you resume, you would always start on set point, being your house. Um, that wouldn't quite work Majora's Mask. Like, if you save mid-temple, yeah. the thing is, in this game, Unlike Ocarina of Time, the amount of time you would spend going back to the temple would work against you. It can't work exactly as it did in that game, but you know, as you, you know, as you hinted at, Ash, 
you, it could still work. Why not just allow you to save at any point and just resume from that point? Like a mobile owl statue, <laughs> if you will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it almost seems like it's overcomplicating things to have owl statues and feather statues. And, yeah. and I don't know, like just playing devil's advocate, you know, modern Nintendo does like to make games as accessible to everyone as possible. So I do have that outside concern, what you were saying, Andre, that they might just make them function as an actual save point, which not only makes owl statues kind of pointless, but it also, again, kind of like you said, kind of hurts the essence of the game. So right. I don't know. I, I, I am kind of watching and waiting to see what they're going to do with this because I could see as, as, as much as they want to keep, you know, what makes Majora's Mask so special intact, I could see modern Nintendo going, you know, you want to make this game accessible and easier for everyone, so let's make these functions regular save points. Could it be that this is a way to give players choice? So you, they, the, the thing did mention that the owl statues would, of course, be there just in addition to these new feather statues. So maybe there is an extra functionality with these feather statues. Once again, like Ash, I'm just playing Devil's Advocate, where they, they are more permanent save. However, if you don't want to play like that and don't want to use the feather feather, feather statues, just use the owl statues and play like the classic game. And you just have to sort of do a self-imposed rule, but you can play the essence of the original game in that way. I, I would, no, <laughs> it doesn't, that, that wouldn't work. I mean, technically, yes, it works. It's, it'd be a poor way of doing it, though. I feel like oh, yeah. if you give the player that choice... I mean, unless you're a masochist, you're always going to take the easier option, right? Right. The yeah. thing is, though, doing that, you kind of are robbing yourself of that experience, though. It's 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 a weird way of looking at it, right? I feel like you will take the easier option, but it might come at the expense of an overall gameplay experience. And I, I'm saying I would probably do the same thing, honestly. Like if I had the option to restart from you know a point where I don't have to redo stuff, I probably would. But I also think that that would that would affect my enjoyment of the game overall. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I mean, I've been, I don't know if there's like a good analogy for this. I guess it's kind of like liposuction, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do tell, I I've never had. I'm really curious to see how you're going to. It, it robs yeah. you of the reward of losing all that weight yourself, right? Imagine how achieve, you know, that sense of accomplishment you'll have if you actually work all that weight off yourself, right? But if you just go to the doctor, you just get it done in a couple hours. It's not quite the same, right? <laughs> right, but the, but that does speak to a, to a more to an interesting and probably separate discussion, though. Is, is that who decides what the game experience should be and 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 what someone wants to get out of it? I mean, if there are a lot of people out there who legitimately would say, you know, I work three jobs, I have a kid, whatever, I don't have time to play the game the original masochistic hard way. I just want to enjoy the game. And, and on my own terms, and and even if that makes me mean, means making it easier, I just want to be able to play the game, and that's okay. a legitimate viewpoint. It, no, it, so, I mean, of course it is. Um, I mean, this is where the purist side of me comes out. Right. And that's the way the game was designed originally was sure. based around this. By offering that choice, you're kind of mitigating a lot of the ideas that went into the game. Right. With that said, I think the ideal way of handling it would be to offer a choice at the onset, kind of like how uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D did. It's like, hey, do you want the new mode, or do you want to play the game the way the game was built originally? I think that'd be a perfect way of doing it. That way, if you want to play originally, you can't be tempted by the easier option halfway through. Um, you're stuck with whatever you chose. Whereas, right. if you're new to the game and you do want maybe a, you know, the new way of playing, not, not necessarily inferior, but not the original way the game was intended to be played, you have the option as well. I think that'd be a perfect way to do it. I completely agree. Yeah, that would work. All right, well, do you guys have any final thoughts about any of this or anything else you want to touch on about Majora's Mask 3D? Any other ideas you have for this game that we haven't mentioned yet? Not really. I'm just, like I said, super excited, and it'd be really awesome if it did come out the 13th. And if the new 3DS comes out with it, well, I don't know. I don't... Here's the thing. I don't really plan at this moment to get a new 3DS. I don't think I need it quite yet. But what about you guys? Would you get the new 3DS if it came out with Majora's Mask? Uh, I, I mean, it's going to depend on entirely what, what the features are. I mean, it, odds are I'll, I'd probably stick with the original 3DS. Um, unless they offer a super compelling reason to pick up a new 3DS. Well, Nintendo's going to send you one anyway, right, Andre? Andre? I mean, I'm, that's a hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I assume they'll probably send you one. You know, me, I'm kind of a whore, so I'll probably get one. I, I, I hate to admit it, but I probably will just get a new 3DS along with Majora's Mask because I do. I, and I, I, I'm a big 3D slider user. I like the idea that you can see the 3D from multiple angles now. That the you know the sweet spot is a lot bigger. And uh, I, I guess, it, but it also does depend on what the exclusive features for Majora's Mask ends up being. I mean, they've already said it's not going to be anything 
visually based, but if for some reason it did end up being a smoother frame rate, let's say 60 frames versus 30, I would definitely go for it. That would but, be a compelling reason, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, beyond that, I, I'll probably get one just because, like I said, I'm kind of a whore, but maybe not. I, mean, I, might, I might wait for a bit, so we'll see. I should mention real quick, though, that even a rock solid 30 frames per second would be a pretty considerable step up from the original game. That's for sure. <laughs> you see, the, the original game ran at like 6 or something. <laughs> it felt that way. It felt yeah. that way, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I think that wraps up for us here, so thanks guys for watching. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explainers. You can find links to it in the description below. It's a good way to keep up to date on the everything we post. And of course, keep an eye on GameExplainers.com for more on Majora's Mask 3D and other things gaming as well. All right, thanks guys. Bye.